This video is a continuation of the 1.5 notes um, concerning one-sided limits and how we can look at the two different one-sided limits, one from the left and one from the right, to determine if a limit at a specific value exists. So for some functions, f of x can approach a different value from the left of the given x value than it does from the right. In such a situation, you can conclude that the limit does not exist. Another example where the limit fails to exist is when f of x either gets extremely large without bound or extremely small without bound. That means your numbers are just getting larger and larger or smaller and smaller, more negative. That means you're moving towards positive infinity or negative infinity. This type of behavior can be described more concisely with the concept of a one-sided limit. So the limit as of f of x as x approaches c from the left equals l and the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right could also equal l. If that is true, then the limit as x approaches just c would be considered l. So if a function, um, if f is a function and c and l are real numbers, then the existence of the limit is that if you have two different one-sided limits, and like I said, one from the left and one from the right, and they have the same value as what they are approaching, then we know that that is the limit. Um, so we're going to look at a couple different examples. For the first one, we have a function f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2 over just x minus 2. And we're going to consider the limit from the left of 2, from the right of 2, and then we're going to discuss whether or not the limit exists. So the best way to do this, if you don't have a graphing tool, is to try to look at a table of values again. So if you have a graphing tool and you have that available, it's easier to see it from a picture usually. So x and f of x, remember that's our x and our y, our desired part that we're trying to, so we're asking does the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x exist? That's what we're really concerned about. So whatever you're trying to approach, you put that in the middle of your table. Then you're going to pick, remember, small decimal points away from that from each side. So something smaller than 2, very, very close to 2, though, would be something like 1.999. We could just drop off one of those 9s, and that would be a little bit less, so 1.99. And we usually do a third one, just 1.9. So notice that each time we step to the left, we got a little bit smaller than the previous one. Not a lot, just a tiny increment. And then on the other side, we'll be coming down uh, from a bigger number down to 2. So one step up would be 2.001, so that's very close to 2. Another step up would be 2.01 and then 2.1. So we take our calculator and we plug these in. Now what you're going to notice, I'm going to do one or two of these and then I'm just going to fill in the rest of the table. Um, we're going to be doing an absolute value, so you have to be careful with the top. So 1.9 minus 2 is negative 0.1, but we're going to be doing the absolute value. Absolute value would then change that to a positive, remember, because it's always a positive distance. And then we want to divide that by, anytime you type something fractional into your calculator, you probably want to put the denominator in a parentheses to make sure it divides by the whole denominator. And then this is 1.9 minus 2. So if we hit enter, then we get that the answer here is negative 1. So for 1.9, the function evaluates at negative 1. So let's do 1.99. So 1.99 minus 2 for the top. And then remember, absolute value would turn that back into a positive. And we'll divide that by 1.99 minus 2. So just plugging it into the function. And notice this also comes out to negative 1. And if you plug in 1.999, it also comes out to negative 1. Let's look from the other side. Let's try 2.1. Let's start with that one. So 2.1 minus 2 for the top. which is 0.1, absolute value of that would just still be 0.1, so we don't need to change the sign, divided by 2.1 minus 2 again, in parentheses. So if we hit enter, that equals positive 1. 
And if you do 2.01 and 2.001, they also come out at positive 1. You cannot plug 2 into the function. So we know that right now we, we have an undefined value at the actual 2. Um, that means it's a restricted domain. But what we're seeing is that on either side, you're just kind of fixed at a specific number. And they're not the same. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is negative 1. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right is positive 1, because this is just staying positive 1 as it gets closer. And because those two limits do not equal the same thing, then the limit does not exist. And we just write d n e. So limit does not exist. All right, let's look at another example really quick. So our next one we have the find the limit uh, as x approaches 0 of x minus 4 over x. So we're going to be doing it again from the left side and the right side, and then we'll try to determine um, if the limit exists overall, which only happens if those two limits match. So let's make our chart. So x and f of x. And we are approaching 0. So that's going to be the center of my chart. Something just a tiny bit smaller than 0 would be negative 0.999. Actually, no, no, no. We want to do something different. We want to work up to, uh, we're working away from 0. So we'll do negative 0.001 because that's just as close to 0 as we can get going three decimal places. And then negative 0.01 and then negative 0.1. On the other side, we can do the same thing, but there'll be positives, so 0 0.001, 0 0.01, and then 0 0.1. Okay, so we already know that if you try plugging 0 into the function, you can't get a value for that. It's dividing by 0, so that would be undefined. But what we care about is what are the limits approaching on each side. So let's plug in the negative 0.1 first. So negative 0.1 minus 4, and then we're dividing that by the negative 0.1, the x value. That is 41. Let's try negative 0.01. So 0.01 is negative. Subtract the 4 on top, and then divide that by the negative 0 0.01. That's 401, so it's getting bigger. And then 0 0.001, and it's negative, minus 4, and divided by 0 0.001, and it's negative. So that actually is 4001. Notice this is getting larger and larger, and if we keep getting smaller and smaller, in other words, we get a smaller decimal, because there are other decimals between those two. The smaller we get and closer we get to zero, you're just going to get getting larger and larger values, and they're positive, so it's just going up towards positive infinity. So the limit here is positive infinity or just infinity. So let's look at it from the other side, because if, if it's also positive infinity, then our limit is approaching infinity. So let's look at this. So 0.1 divide, or excuse me, minus 4, and then divided by 0.1. So that'd be negative 39, and then 0 0.01 minus 4 divided by 0 0.01 is negative 399. And I've already done the last one as well. It's negative 3,999. Notice this is also getting, but it's not getting larger. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The more negative you get, the smaller you are. So this is actually going downhill towards negative infinity. So this one is headed to positive infinity, and the right side is headed to negative infinity, which means that the two limits are different. Positive and negative infinity are completely opposites of each other. So that means that the limit does not exist. And then I believe we have just one more. So find the limit as x approaches negative 2 of 6 over x plus 2. So negative 2 is our desired piece in our chart that we want to look at.
Uh, if we go a little bit smaller, that would be negative 1.999, and then negative 1.9, and negative 1, uh, excuse me, that was 99, and then 1.9. And then a little bit bigger would be negative 2.001, negative 2.01 and negative 2.1. Um, so what we end up getting with this one is that this comes out to 60. I'm not going to do all the calculator. This is 600 and this is 6,000. So from the left side we're approaching a positive infinity um, and then from the right side we actually get a negative 60, a negative 600, and a negative 6,000. So this one again is approaching negative infinity this time. So notice they're approaching different things, so the limit does not exist. And that's it for this video.